Zoom, Microsoft Teams, Slack, Google Meets. Remember when it was just MSN Messenger and AIM? There's like a zillion video conferencing apps out there now, but someone's probably wondering which one is the best one? And what if you're creating content or live streaming or trying to put together a talk show? Well, that's what we're going to take a look at today in the lab. We're going to try and determine which is the best video conferencing app. All right, first, we got to lay out the criteria that we're going to use to judge these apps. Now, the first one is going to be productivity. Now, this kind of means like ease of use and integration with other apps, like how well does it work with Google Suite? How easy is it to set up calls and get people to join? Kind of just things that make your life easier when you need to contact people. The next thing is going to be quality. This is pretty much straightforward, the video and audio quality. And last but not least is content creation. So a lot of people that tune into this channel, you know, they're focused on creating talk shows or doing live streams. And so how do these apps work when it comes to content creation? Now, I know there's some things that some professionals are going to want to know about, like security and whatnot. But I feel like for the people that maybe tune into this channel that are building content or working for home, looking for productivity, this is going to cover most of those features. So pretty much all modern video conferencing apps kind of work the same way. They create a link or an invite that you can basically send out to a person so they can join the call. But I got to say that there's one app that really stands above the others when it comes to productivity. And that has to be Google Meets because it integrates directly with the Google Suite. So you go into Google Calendar, you create a new calendar event, you can invite people, you can create a link so people can join. You can even create just ad hoc events and bring them in. You don't need to install any apps. It works all through the web browser and it even integrates well with some of the other video conferencing apps like Slack. So productivity wise, Google Meets is far the easiest and best in getting people to join. There's even mobile apps, works on your phone. You don't even need to, I think, install the app necessarily on your phone. Sometimes you can just get it through the actual calendar app or even the Gmail app. Now, I think the next thing that comes close is pretty much the direct competitor to Google, which is Microsoft Teams. So for very much the same reasons that Google works because it's part of an entire ecosystem, Microsoft Teams is the same thing. If you're on Outlook or Office 360, it integrates with all that and you can create links and invites web-based, mobile-based, all works the same, but pretty much all other apps, you know, they require you to create an account or download an application and install it to run it. Uh, some are web-based, but I do got to say Google Hangouts or Google Meets is pretty much the best way to go when it comes to getting things started quickly. It's very user-friendly. It even has like really cool features like you can screen share from it. There's a chat functionality, there's a whiteboard functionality, and there's even live captions. Now, quality is very important because you need to be able to see and hear the person that you're talking to, especially when it comes to content creation. And I did a pretty extensive video, which you can see if you click above, but basically Discord had the best overall video and audio quality, especially audio, because if you fully boost a Discord server, you get way more controls over the audio bitrate, which is quite nice, but this is kind of expensive to do. So if you're going for the free options, then Google Meets and Zoom have really good controls to increase the video quality and they have pretty good audio quality as well. But I will say that with video, you really don't have too much control over the video quality. Basically, all these video conferencing apps prefer stability over quality. However, there's one app that kind of stands out from the rest, which we'll talk about in the next section. Now, a lot of podcasts and talk shows have shifted to online because it's a lot harder to get people to come over and film stuff. So because of this, it's really important to have tools that are flexible for creating these talk shows and give you the best quality possible. Now, for pretty much all of the video conferencing apps are pretty much all stuck in the same boat, you know, so you get this call window with all your calls. So that means you basically need to screen capture this to be able to produce a talk show if you're having video as a component in your talk show. Now, if you want to find out more about how to put together an online talk show or podcast, we have a video again, links above to check it out. But pretty much they're they're all in the same boat and you all need to do this. But there's actually one outlier here and it's an app that you probably haven't used for a long time, but it's Skype. So Skype is wonderful because it allows the use of NDI and NDI is basically this protocol that allows you to send video over your network. And the cool thing with Skype is that you can actually pull independent video feeds via NDI as sources from anyone that's on the call. So, you know, everyone can have their own separate video feed. Now, this makes it so much easier to manage and switch between scenes. 
but the only drawback is is that Skype's audio quality is just not there with some of the other apps like Discord by far has the best audio quality. So you need to make a decision on the content that you're producing. So if you're producing like a podcast and audio is really important, you know, stick with Discord. If you're producing something where you need like flexibility and to manage and juggle a lot of guests, then maybe Skype is your best option. So which app is the best? Well, I do got to say overall for just ease of use and general quality and just integration with everything. And if you're getting started, Google Meets is probably the best, especially if you're dealing with people that aren't too tech savvy. Now, if you're on the other side of the coin, maybe you're working in an office or as part of a company and the IT department says we need to use Microsoft products, then, you know, go with Microsoft Teams. They're pretty much interchangeable depending on, you know, what your guests are going to need to use. Now, when it comes to content production, I would say definitely consider Skype or Discord. Skype if you need to manage those video feeds and Discord if you really want really good audio quality. But I want to know from you, like, what is your favorite video conferencing app and what's annoying when dealing with a new app or piece of software and trying to troubleshoot it? And don't you just miss the days of when we were all on ICQ or IRC? Let me know in the comments, give a like if this video was helpful and share it as well. Be sure to subscribe to the channel and we'll see you next time that we go into the lab.